and everything, then you wonder, how was it that that many people, millions and millions and millions of sane, regular, hardworking people would follow such a leader? And would follow such a leader and allow him to carry out acts of genocide and acts of mass murders, invading countries, trying to wipe out populations? Uh, how? How did people who were men of God even follow such a man and agree with him to be able to bring forth a very common picture that we see? I'm sure everybody has seen these pictures before. How did this happen? I wonder myself. And, you know, not to think too far into far off lands, even if you look at our own country. This is a period that our country went through. Can you imagine? Look at the sign. Who wants to read the sign for me? Somebody. Raise a hand. Gentleman right there at the front. Man, you're racist. How could you even use that over here? Right? Imagine in our time if somebody said, Jabs, keep moving. This is a white man's neighborhood. Imagine how offensive that would be. How many people here would be offended by that? Oh, you wouldn't? Really? Seriously? Okay. <laughs> you're going to have to stand the ball with me, and I'm watching you guys. All right? So everybody here would be offended by this. Imagine if... Ordinary citizens who had no crime, had committed no wrongdoing, were, were arrested and taken and put behind barbed wires and made to wear uniforms and, and, and humiliated and, and put in prison, internment camps, in these kinds of cages for years and years without even being charged with a crime. How many of you would be appalled by that as an American? Somebody wouldn't apparently. I'm just kidding. Okay. Imagine this. Imagine notices like this. If you go into a neighborhood and there's a notice that if you're of a certain heritage or a certain people, you're not allowed to be in this neighborhood. You have to, even if you're ancestry, you have to go straight to a prison camp, even though you've done nothing wrong. And imagine if politicians were trying to ban an entire group, a segment of society, even though that segment in a whole had done nothing wrong. Imagine, how could Americans have let this happen based on the freedom? Oh, and I got the role of music there. Okay. Um, even though America was based on, on such rules that we believe in people being equal, imagine what would you have done if you were there during this time? How, would this, how did this happen? The media, propaganda, villainization of a people. Do you see this cartoon? What is it telling you? It is telling you that all people of Japanese ethnicity are only awaiting an order from some emperor to attack America, even though this was totally false. Totally false. You know who drew that? Dr. Seuss, by the way. No, I'm not kidding. Look it up. So when you have this kind of a war where you take cartoons and you make pictures that make you think that there is an ethnicity or a religious group here, it being the Jewish population in Germany, that is stabbing you. They are your hidden cells. They are waiting amongst you to attack you because they are your enemy. When you get fed this propaganda and you don't read 
and you don't think, and you don't speak, then you start to think that there are certain people that are not human. You start to think that they're animals. You start to get fed this idea, and you start to buy it. And this is something we have to be very careful about, because what happens, it takes a human being and starts to make a human into being less of a human, dehumanization. You see what they do? If they don't want you to be a human, they give you a number. This is from World War II, and this is from a few years ago. So, if you look at the idea where you start giving numbers to people, that's why prisoners are not given names, they're given numbers, so that people don't think of them as people. You see, you take the human aspects away, you cover up the eyes, you cover up the faces, you cover them up, so then they don't look like human beings. So when you're being told that people were electrocuted and shocked and tortured, you don't think of them as being humans. Waterboarding, it's probably some fun activities like surfing. Sure, why don't you go try it? So when you look at this kind of a thing, then you have to think in our time, when this is happening, what are we doing? As people of conscience, as people who look back at Germans during World War II and thought, how could they let that happen? As people who thought back to the 40s about what the Japanese were being go going through and the internment camps, and we thought, how could Americans have let that happen? Innocent people were being rounded up and put in eight cages, never even being charged with anything. How could that happen? It's because people didn't take the time, like you today, to come out and think and realize and speak and then realize that maybe what we are being fed like those cartoons aren't the truth. So who are we going to be like in this time? We talk about the times of Martin Luther King. We watch these movies about Malcolm X and, and the struggle during the civil rights movement. And all of us think, yeah, I'd be right there, right? I'd be, I'd be right there. I'd be that guy, you know? I'm like, I'm with you guys. You know, I, I want to stand up for what's right. You know, I'd be the guy against the Nazis in Germany. But would we? I mean, if we're going with this propaganda today that we're being fed, if we're not trying to clarify these issues, build those bridges, read ourselves about what is being fed to us through Fox and, and, and all these other uh, shows that are no longer the news but more propaganda machines, then we aren't that guy. Then we are those people who quietly let a massacre, a genocide, a, 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 a internment of our civilization go on. And we don't want that to be. And that's one of the points today, is to clarify some of those issues and make, it under, make all of us understand that history, when you don't know it, when you don't think about it, it will repeat itself. And if you don't believe me, look. Look at what's going on. You know, when we see these mass rallies that were anti-Semitic, talking about getting rid of the Jews and, and how Jews should no longer be in Germany, we're seeing the same thing today in Germany. Same country, different religion, different ethnicity, but it is going on. So where will you stand? If we talk about Germans and how could they do this, well, look at what's going on in our own backyard, where people are not allowed to build places of worship, where people are being criminalized as a huge population with the actions of the few. And this is why we want to look at history and then our time and look at history and then our time and then ask ourselves where will we stand a hundred years from now when the history of our time will be discussed when we look at those cartoons that were used in the 40s and 50s against to justify the genocide of jewish germans you will find the similar types of cartoons being made today when we look at the propaganda machines of the Nazis, we find... Oh, I'm sorry, I don't know. Fuck, oh, oh. Oops. Ah, uh, must have messed that up. You will find similar propaganda machines in our time. So what are you going to do? Are you going to sit and watch and let that feed your brain? Or no, are you going to be like those people that will go and speak to a people, that will attend a mosque, that will talk to a Muslim, that will pick up a copy of the Quran and read for yourself and know what is the truth from what is propaganda? Speak to a Muslim. You have Muslims here on your campus. There are about 8 million plus Muslims in the United States. There are around 160 to 200,000 Muslims in San Diego County by itself. 
We have 25 mosques. We have a lot of Muslims that are around. Speak to one. We're human. We don't bite. Sometimes. <laughs> so, you know, learn. Open up that dialogue. You know, we have an amazing amount of information available to us today. This is not like those days where we couldn't find out about something. Today, you know, not just the internet. Internet's one tool. Go to a mosque, come to one of these brothers here or sisters, and get a Quran for yourself. Go read it yourself. Get a booklet. Read. This is the problem. We want everything in 20 second YouTube videos. That's not going to happen. Well, if you are going to, John Stewart's pretty funny. You can watch his videos. But, but I would really suggest clearing up some of these misconceptions. Going to events even like this, even when you're not getting extra credit. So, having that introduction, I want to begin with discussing some of the common misconceptions. And we're going to dwell on a couple more than others. I realize that because there are some that are being pushed more than others. So, uh, we want to deal with the issues at hand. First thing we hear is all Muslims are terrorists. You know, we've heard it. I've heard it yelled at me from people that were speeding away because they were too cowardly to say it to my face. So, You've heard it before, and even major politicians, I mean, you cannot imagine that an elected official in a country like this would make a comment like that, but they have. So let's talk about this. There are about 1.6 billion Muslims in the world. Out of the around 6 billion people that we have, 6 to 7, almost 2 out of every 6, almost, are going to be Muslim. So if you had almost 2 billion terrorists trying to blow themselves up, I hate to say this, but the world would no longer be. Right? I mean, even if they were taking a couple of guys out, it would be finished. So everybody realizes this is a ridiculous statement. Even if somebody who's racist will make it, they know themselves they're lying. Because not all, right? So when we make this clarification, and everybody who is of sane mind would agree that this is not true, the next thing we hear is, well, maybe not all Muslims are terrorists, but all terrorists are Muslim, right? Every single terrorist is Muslim though, right? Wrong. And I don't want to give my opinion, let's talk facts. So the definition taken, I, mean, I looked at the FBI definition, it was really long, but so I just used this little one because I don't want to keep you guys too long. The use of violent acts to frighten the people in an area as a way of trying to achieve a political goal. This is the Webster Dictionary definition. You can Google it yourself. I've given the URL here. So if we take that definition of terrorism, trying to scare people through violence to get to a political goal, then you could say Hitler was a terrorist. He terrorized a lot of people. You could definitely say the KKK are terrorists. They terrorize a lot of people, right? You could say the IRA were terrorists. All of those would fall under that. But then you're going to tell me, you know what, no, 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 we're not talking about way back then. We're talking about bombings and suicide things and those kinds of things. We're talking about that. So, okay, let's talk about that. Where did modern terrorism, what we would consider a modern phase of terrorism, begin? The birth of modern terrorism, which you may not realize, is the Argon bombing of the King David Hotel. Google it yourself. Look, I'm encouraging you to look it up yourself. That's why I give you all these references and names and dates. I don't want you to depend on me. I'm just here to open this door to, to something that you may not realize. How many of you guys knew about this event before coming today? One, two, out of three, four, ooh, forget it. Out of the 30, 40, 50 people that we have, we got three, four people when this was such a historic event that it is the birth of using bombs and, ex and, and terrorist acts to get to a political goal, which was the definition of terrorism that we decided. And if you look up even the FBI and other databases, they will tell you this is the first use of such activities in a modern period. And who was it carried out by? It was carried out on July 22, 1946 by Jewish Zionist terrorists. Again, not to paint all Jews with this picture. This is one segment of that population. Just like you can't paint all Muslims or all Christians or all Buddhists with one broad brush, but we want to know 
Because today when we say Jewish terrorist, everybody's ears go up. What? What did you want? Did you just make a mistake? No, I didn't. Read. And they used this bombing of the British military and administration office in Palestine at the King David Hotel in Jerusalem. 91 people were killed and 46 others were injured from different nationalities. And this was the beginning of modern terrorism. And it was not rooted by Muslims. You will say, oh, that was one event, long time ago, it never happened again. Wrong. Anybody know this man already? All right, even the two, three we had earlier. Barach Goldstein was an American-born Israeli physician, a man proclaiming to follow the Jewish faith. He mass murdered innocent Muslim worshippers while they were praying in the Ibrahim Khalil Mosque while they were mourning, there was a morning prayer going on, not armed, no conflict, not in the Gaza battle, no military, he just walked into a mosque, gunned them down, killed around 30 people, injured another 125, and he was a dedicated, according to his own mind, in his own mind he was a dedicated Jew, carrying out the word, work of God. And that's how he explained his actions. I don't agree with him. I don't think he was following his faith. But that's how he justified his act of terrorism. Let's talk about terrorism against the United States. Who knows about the USS Liberty? One person does. Two, three. Excellent. Four. Oh, yeah, right. This was an attack on a US carrier by an Israeli jet. This actually happened. I never heard about this in school. I never read about it in history. Apparently in my history book, this got deleted somehow. This just wasn't there. But when you go and you research and you watch the videos of those survivors that were on that carrier, they will tell you this was no accident. There were no other ships from any other nationality in those international waters when this U.S military carrier was attacked not just by the Israeli Air Force but by the Navy combining killing 34 American military crew members and injuring another 171 look it up these are acts of terrorism don't want to dwell on any one religion or race so let's move on let's talk about Christianity has there been terrorist acts committed in the name of Christianity I will quote President Obama who recently made this comment that he's got a lot of flack for, but read what he says. We shouldn't get on a high horse and think, because President Obama, contrary to what the Tea Party may think, he's not Muslim. He said he's not. He said, we should not get on our high horse and think that this is unique to some other place. Remember that during the Crusades and the Inquisition committed terrible deeds in the name of Christ. Slavery and Jim Crow all too often was justified in the name of Christ. This is coming from the President of the United States, a man who is a Christian himself. That this work of terrorism has happened. But again, somebody's going to say, oh, that was a long time ago, the Crusades. That, I wasn't even born. Well, let's get a little closer to home. Anybody remember this guy? Okay, come on, you got to have some hands now. All right. Uh, yeah. Timothy McVeigh, um, a man who was actually a member of a church. You know, people are like, oh, he wasn't a religious man. Look it up. His father, his mother, they said, he attended churches. And he bombed the FBI building in 1995. Some of you may be a little young at the time, but you were there. It's all right. It's not that long ago. He killed 168 people and injured over 600. According to the US government, and look this up, this remains the most significant act of domestic terrorism in the United States history, till today which was not a foreign plot, a domestic plot, till today this remains the most significant act. And this is not one person. We can talk about Eric Rudolph, the one who bombed the Olympic Park bomber. He used to go around bombing abortion clinics and, and uh, what we would consider same-sex equal marriage uh, centers and other things like that. He was a member of the Ch Church of Israel, which is a a church associated with a group called the Christian Identity Movement. If you don't know about the Army of God or the Christian Identity Movement or the Aryan Brotherhood, look it up. You will find out that everything that you see in ISIS and Al-Qaeda is right here in the US. It's just a matter of how the situation is. 
You know, when we talk about foreign terrorists and you talk about Iraq and Syria and all these kinds of things, think about this. Imagine if another country invaded the United States. Let's say like the US invading Iraq. Hypothetically. With some made up theory about, oh, I don't know, weapons of mass destruction or something like that. Well, what happened to that? Huh. Anyway. And then your police force is taken out, the military is taken out, the National Guard are taken out. Every neighborhood starts to defend itself. Every neighborhood starts to arm itself, defend itself. Everything will fall among sectarian lines. Everything will fall amongst racial lines. There will be Mexicans and blacks and whites attacking. Look at the LA riots. Look at what happens in, in, in Ferguson. Imagine if there was no government. Then we put a country in that situation. We invade a country that had nothing to do with 9-11. Nothing. Osama bin Laden and Saddam Hussein hated each other. Had no connection. Prove it. One Adam's bit of connection, not there. We invaded this country because they had weapons of mass destruction that didn't exist. They didn't have them. We admit it now. Sorry. My bad. Invaded your country, destroyed your infrastructure, left you as a mess. And now we're like, how could that be going on? Oh. Imagine these people if they had no fear of a government. Let's look a little bit something closer to home. Who knows this map? Wow, I guess Fox News didn't cover it as good as they should have. In 2012, a couple years ago, three years ago, this man walks into a Sikh temple in Oak Creek, Wisconsin. And even though he is an ex-veteran army, served in the army, he is, as you can see, a very proud white supremacist, a man who sports the cross, you can see. He walks into a Sikh temple and opens fire. Guns down, innocent people in Wisconsin, in the US. Right? And what he's trying to do is kill Muslims. But because he's racist and racist people apparently are not the smartest people in the world, he doesn't realize they're Sikh and not Muslim. Not that it would have been any better. But this is a man who is a terrorist. So when we talk about terrorism and all terrorists are Muslim, then we should read before we speak, and we'll realize that terrorism has no religion. We will end this with this gentleman. Who knows him? Come on, see some hands. We got one, two, three, four, five. Wow, this is this is pretty disappointing. Uh, this man, he is of Norwegian descent. He attacked a, a government building in Oslo with a, with a car bomb, killing. Uh, I'll give you a few people there, and then uh, he continued his massacre by going on an island and killing 69 children at a youth camp. You, you look at the picture, he's executing kids. 69 kids and the people, 8 people at the building, all of them, he does it in the name of a crusade. He writes a 1500 page manifesto with crosses and crusader symbols talking about the crusade of Europe to get rid of the infidel Muslims from Europe. But Fox refuses to call him a Christian terrorist. Why? If a Muslim that never prayed in his life was not a member of any mosque, just went nuts and shot somebody, it would be Al-Qaeda and ISIS's special you know, sleeper cell that went into action and Islam and Muslims and Quran but when a man who himself writes a 1500 page manifesto talking about his actions being for Christ, being a crusade, who is a member of a church, you can look up his biography, Wikipedia him, Google him, he was a member of the Christian Church of Norway. He was a man who considered himself a Christian carrying out a crusade, but nobody wants to call him a Christian terrorist. Bill O'Reilly, no, what? Christian, no way. This is a double standard that's being fed to us for a reason. And, and we don't want to just harp on these religions. If you want to keep going, let's talk about Hinduism. Hinduism, a religion that we usually talk about and think of flowers and, and, and peace and meditation and yoga. You don't think they're Hindu? Look up the Gujarat massacre. Look up the RSS, BJP, Modi that came here. The, the Prime Minister of India, he was banned from the US 
until he became prime minister. Why? Because he supervised a genocide in Gujarat. Under the name of Hinduism, a religion that is supposed to definitely pr produce peaceful people. You talk about Buddhism. Uh, come on. Buddhist terrorists? No way. Right? You can't even eat meat. Yes, there are Buddhist terrorists. Look up Time magazine. Read about what happened and what is happening in Myanmar, which used to be called Burma. A massacre at the hands of Buddhist priests. My point is not to insult any other religion. My point is to clarify that terrorism has no connection to any religion or ethnicity. It's a tool that is used by people trying to get to a political end. It has been used by people of different faiths. It has been used by atheists. It has been used by the Red Army, which was an atheist a Japanese terrorist organization that let out nerve gas in the subways in Japan. It has been used by different religions. And with historic facts, we can tell you that not only are not all Muslim terrorists, but not even all terrorists are Muslims. But we've been fed this line that, okay, 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 maybe there's one or two non-Muslim terrorists, but the majority of terrorists are Muslims, right? Wrong. According to the FBI, and this is not mine, you can look up, there's the URL, look it up. According to the FBI, in the last recording, which they took a segment of time, and this was after 9-11, 2002-2005, when they recorded all acts of terrorism. Now this does not only mean what Fox recorded. Because if this was only what Fox News reported, then this would be like all Muslims except like 1% there, or maybe. But this is not Fox News. This is reality. This is the FBI and then recording of all actions that use terrorist violence for their political cause, and this is a breakdown of those groups that use them. Look it up. Don't believe me. There's a URL to the FBI.gov. It's not my site. This is why we have been fooled. We have been bamboozled. We have been tricked. We, we are being corrupted to think that there is a reality that is not there. Just like the fear that was put of Japanese Americans during World War II that didn't exist. Just like Hitler put the fear of, of Jews and others in the German population that didn't exist, we are being put in that situation. We need to wake up and realize what's going on. Now, quickly we can talk about Europe as well, because apparently there are no-go zones in Europe where non-Muslims can't go out. I don't know. I've been to Europe many times. And I've never found one, and millions of people that live there don't realize there's one, but Fox News somehow got it. Here is a breakdown of terrorist acts by percentage between 2006 and 2008. And you look at the Islamist, quote unquote, statistic that's given. Yes, it's what gets on the news. Charlie Hebdo was all over the news. But when, when three Muslims were executed by a man execution style just recently, here in America, we don't see that media coverage. When in France, Muslims are regularly killed by hate crimes, we don't get that media coverage. When a non-Muslim walks into a mosque and shoots up the mosque, like we saw earlier with Goldstein, we don't see that coverage. And that's why an unbalanced picture starts to form in the minds of people. Now, having discussed this, I know a thought may still be coming. Well, maybe people of other religions, they used violence. But in Islam, it's the Quran that preaches violence. It preaches hate. Right? That is wrong. When we look at the Quran, and we have a Quran, if anybody wants a Quran, we can get you a Quran. Read it yourself. It's not, we don't have any edited versions. You know, when you go to a Barnes & Noble or like some kind of bookstore, I'm not trying to plug any bookstore here, and you go and you check the Bible, you will find a lot of versions, right? You will find the King James Version, you will find the new updated King James Version, you will find the new living uh, edition, you will find the Catholic Bible, which is a different amount of chapters than the, than the Protestant, you will find the American living version, the new revised edited King James Version. But in the Quran, we have one Quran. Shia, Sunni, this, that, we have one Quran. If you want to get the Quran, get the Quran, read it. Here, I'll give you references myself. What does the Quran talk about? Anyone killed 
who, who kills a person unjustly, it would be as if he had killed all of humanity. And if anyone saved a life, it would be as if he saved all of mankind. mankind. Now, are there verses in the Quran about fighting? Of course there are. I'm not going to lie to you. It's, it's a practical book. Every book does. The Bible has it. Don't believe me? I have one. We can read it in a minute. But what Fox News doesn't tell you is when you read those verses, read what comes after it. Read what comes before it. Read in context. And you will find that always, even after the verses that have to do with battles and war, it will say, if they incline towards peace, then incline towards it. And, and <clears throat> trust in Allah. Surely He's the all-seeing and all-knowing. Always, even when there is battle, if there is a way to, to, to stop the battle and have peace, that is what the Quran orders us to do as Muslims. Now, somebody may say, oh, but you know, there are battles and talks of killing and stuff in the in the Quran. So just so we don't have any misconceptions, okay, here's the Bible. I didn't print it. Somebody gave it to us somewhere trying to convert us. So, Isaiah 13, 14, verse number 21. Prepare slaughter for his children because of the iniquity of their fathers, lest they rise up and process a land and fill the trace of world with city. Killing of children. Okay. Talk about brotherly love. And Moses stood in the entrance of the camp and said, Whoever is on the Lord's side, come to me. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together to him. And he said to them, Thus say the Lord God of Israel, Let every man put his sword on his side and go out and from the entrance throughout the camp and let every man kill his brother and every man kill his companion and every man kill his neighbor. So the sons of Levi did accordingly and the word of, to the word of Moses and about 3,000 men of the people fell dead that day. Now, does this mean that Christians are ordained to do these kinds of actions? No. I'm not saying that at all. But can you take any religious text and take verses out of context and justify killing? Yes. Has it been done by the Bible? Yes. Google it. Hitler used the Bible in his speeches. This is what the President Obama said. Even when we looked at slavery, the Bible was used to justify slavery, even though it goes against the teachings of Jesus. Peace be upon him. So, we want to be fair when we talk about religious texts. We want to admit that every religious text can be and has been misused in the past, including the Quran. <laughs> آمنت أن الآخرة لا بد يوما آتية كل الخلائق حاضرة كل السرائر بادية